Hi, this is Paul Stolt from iPhone Dev TV, and I got a request on how to use a UI menu controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Let me show you my mouse and we'll get started. So let's create a new Xcode project. And in here, we're just gonna do an iOS application single view. I'll hit next. We'll call this UI menu controller tutorial. And I'll just hit next and create it in my projects folder. Now, once it's open, all I'm going to do is work in the code file here. I'll get rid of some of the boilerplate code here. And then we'll go in and insert some things. So there's a, a thing called the UI menu view controller. And I use it in some of my apps. I use it in photo table that's on the app store to show different things. And so in order to work with this, we need to do a few different steps to get it to appear. So we've got the UI menu controller. Now there's actually a singleton object that we access here called the shared menu controller. Once we have that, we can set different attributes on it. So we can set um, the target rect that we want to invoke it on. And so this can give us some control as to where it will appear. And I'll just put uh, a target rectangle variable here. And then in view, we can just do self.view. Now, depending on, I don't know why that's not auto-completing. All right, so something's weird. Okay, so it doesn't like my variable that I haven't defined yet. So let's go ahead and define a CG rec target rectangle. I'm gonna make one up. It's just gonna be CG rect. Um, and we'll do rec make, and then we'll go, I think 200, 200, and then the width, we'll just do 100, 100. So that is our XY coordinate, 200, 200, and then that's our width and our height right here, and that's gonna be where it's going to display. Now, the next thing that you'll do with the menu controller is you might wanna add some custom items. So you would create a UI menu item, and then we can go ahead and just create a menu item. And so if you want to do a custom item, this is how you would do it in your application. You would create an item, and then there is the UI item, menu item, alloc to create the space, and then init with title and action. So the title here, we're gonna call it a custom action. So you can call it whatever you want. And then we pass in a selector. So we use the special at selector, and then the name of the method. We'll just call it custom action and it has one parameter, which is gonna be the sender object, which is gonna be whoever's invoking it. And it should be the UI menu controller object that is invoking it. Now with that, we can go ahead and add that to our shared menu controller. So there's a, a method on here and it is called set menu items. And then we just pass in an array. So we'll create an array here using the literal syntax. And when we do the at symbol, we can do the, the bracket. And you can see that this is gonna create an NS array. So we can go ahead and do that. All we need to do is pass in menu item here. And that's gonna be the only item in the array. And then we can set it. Our next step is to actually show it. And we won't show it until we do some kind of action. So let's have a tap gesture that we're gonna add in here. And all we need to do for that is create a UI tap gesture recognizer. And we'll call this tap gesture is equal to UI tap gesture recognizer alloc to create the space, a knit with target and action. So we go with this. The target is going to be ourself in this case because I want to tap on the view. And the view is going to be the whole white area for the iPhone app. So the selector we can put in here and that will be the at selector and I like to call them handle tap gesture, something like that that's descriptive. This takes one parameter, it's gonna be the tap gesture. All right, so we're gonna create the tap gesture and then we can go ahead and assign this to our view. So self.view is gonna be our current screen and I'm just gonna throw it here, but you might wanna customize where you put it. You might be putting this on an image view or you might not even be doing a tap gesture. You might just have a button that you can interact with. Depending on how you do this, most likely it's gonna be a custom view. And so you wanna customize where it's gonna go. So self.view is just an easy way to add it. So I do add gesture recognizer. And here we can just add the tap gesture and we are good to go.
All right, so now what happens is when I tap the screen, it's going to crash. So let's walk through and see what happens. We're not there yet, we're getting close. This is just a, a quick little tutorial. Tap the screen, it's going to crash, and it's crashing because we have an unrecognized selector being sent. And so that's because we haven't implemented it. So let's go back and add the two methods that we said that we're gonna have that we don't have yet. And the first one is our custom action. So let's go ahead and add that. That will be custom action. Now this one's not being called yet, but it will be shortly. And we need to call it like so. And then I'll put a print statement just to prove that it works. You can add your own logic in here and we'll just call it custom action. So this is a good sanity check to make sure that we're on the right track. And with that, we are then gonna go ahead and add our tap gesture method. So that's gonna be a void type and then handle tap gesture. And with that, we can do a UI tap gesture as the parameter instead of sender. So we can be very specific here. And I like to call it just gesture. Um, it's just my preference rather than calling it tap gesture because a lot of the gesture code I, I work with does some similar things. And so it's easier for me to just keep them all called that. And in here is where we wanna show the menu. So all I'll do here is say UI menu controller, shared menu controller, and then set, I believe it's visible, menu visible. So here we just say, yes, we want it to be visible and I want it animated so we can go ahead and do that. Now, you might go ahead and try and run this and find out that things aren't working. So we're tapping, it's not crashing, I guess that's good. We're not seeing any messages here, so let's print so we know that the tap gesture is hooked up. We go ahead and we rerun, and now you see that we are tapping, so it's getting taps across the entire iPhone screen. Um, you can't see me clicking, so here you can see me clicking, and the timestamps are going up. So if you just look over here, you'll see that it is moving as I am tapping. So it's working, um, but we have no menu. And the way we get that menu back is we need to add some extra methods. So the first thing that we definitely need to add is there's this method called um, can become first responder and it's a bull type. So the shortcut for all of these things, and this has been incredibly helpful for me, is to first start with the, the method signature, which is always gonna be a dash for a a class, or sorry, an instance method versus plus for a class method. So you can think of class methods as being owned by the actual class object, they're like a static method. And here we're just gonna start typing and can become first responder is the method that we need here. And so here you wanna return yes. Now you could add logic to make it so that it only happens in certain cases. And so that's one way that you can control when the menu can appear. Though generally, you'll probably just set this to yes, and then you'll use the set menu visible when you want to make it visible. So let's go ahead and see if this works. And again, we, we don't see anything yet. So that's, that's one of the pieces of the puzzle. So <laughs> we're, we're making some progress. The next thing that we need to do is can perform action. So we'll do dash and start typing can perform action. And you'll see it is right here. So I'll implement this method. Now these methods are, are, are methods that are part of our UI view controller view responder class. So you can see it's declared in the, the UI responder for that. And I believe this one's in the same location. So yes, UI responder for both of these. Now, if you wanna learn more, just uh, hold the option key and click on the variable name or the method name, and you will be able to jump to the documentation or you can Google it. Um, Either way, you can find out some of the answers. Now, what I like to do here is have a bool result, and I'll set it to no initially. We don't want to always return um, yes from this. So let's see what happens when we do return yes. Just going to do a quick example, see if this makes our thing work. And it is not working yet. I'm going to try one more thing, self.view.window, make key window. Nope.
Oh, that's weird. All right, so apparently you want all of this code um, next to e each other when you want to display it, which I guess makes sense. So let's go ahead and I don't think I need that key window statement. So let's let's check out. Now, I know if you do have multiple key windows or if you show certain APIs, you may need to make your view or whatever you're going to make, uh, make sure that you set the key window. So depending on if you're using someone as, someone else's thing, you can run into issues where when you return back to your app, you'll find that the menu control is no longer working. I've had this issue in photo table uh, when I've done things with it. So let's go ahead. We'll, we'll test this out. We can see all of our actions here and you can see that we have a ton of actions and there's our custom action and there it has, it has worked. Now you won't want to use all of these actions. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple check here to make sure that we want to only run the actions that we can support. So if, and here we will check what the selector is. So you'll see that one of the, the things in here is the action. And so what I can do is I can pass in whatever actions I want to support. So I might want to support copy or um, I might want to support my custom action. And so what this will do is it will limit the total number of options that the user actually sees. And here it will say, rather than having multiple return statements or just returning a value, I like to make it very clear. We'll say that result is equal to yes. And with this, this will limit us to the two options rather than I think about 16 options we saw when we tapped. And now we have a copy action, which is going to crash because I haven't implemented it yet. So a copy makes a whole lot more sense when you have text to copy. And in this example, I don't really have anything, but I'll just throw it in here. So this is a, a method that autocomplete should be able to complete for me. There we go. And I can print out something so that we show that this is working. And we move the iPhone over. I tap copy. We see copy. I tap custom action. We see custom action. So it's simple as that. Uh, make sure that all of your shared menu stuff is all in the same location. I, I ran through this demo and uh, I guess I split it up this time and that actually caused an issue. Now, sometimes you may want to make the window key and you really only run into this situation when you're running an app um, that will take over your window. And generally in an iPhone app, there's only one window. But if someone's trying to launch their code from maybe a framework that you've included, they want to display content. Maybe it's like an ad network. They want to display a full screen ad on your app. That might actually change the key windows and it might not reset the proper properties for you. And so you might need to make sure that your window is key. Otherwise, your tap events will not work. So this is a little tutorial on how to work with this. This is code that Apple has provided. And you can use this in any part of your iPhone app. You just have to remember to implement these methods to get the UI menu controller to work. And if you don't, if you miss any of these things, nothing appears. And then make sure you set your target window, um, your target area where it's going to appear. We can change the area where it appears if we just move the numbers down. So if this is our height, We'll change it to 400. We should see that the menu appears much lower. And you could do something like self.bounds or self.view.bounds.size.width. Um, and then we can divide this by two to get it to the center. And we should see something closer to the center. Uh, it's not quite in the center. You just play with these numbers and, and move it all around. So uh, I'm not exactly sure where it decides to draw that, that arrow. And, and that's something that you'll have to experiment with to just get this working. It could be taking into account the actual size here. So maybe I need to shift everything over by 100. So let's, let's do 100 divided by two, which would be 50 and see if that centers us. And there we are, we're right in the center. So, um, your target rectangle needs to be in the center. And if I were to draw a view, 
there at that location. That would make a little bit more sense, but I'm not. So there you go.